So I'll be giving my talk on keratoplasty and astigmatism, astigmatism and there are no financial or uh, proprietary interests. Now, most common cause of suboptimal vision in clear graft uh, is uh, astigmatism. And in 15 to 30% of the cases, it may be more than five diopters and it is often irregular. And there are two ways in which it can present. The early post-op uh, with the sutures in, uh, because of the position of the sutures, the depth of the sutures, and the homogeneity of the sutures, and the late post-op because of the quality of the, quality of the cut, wound configuration, symmetry of the graft placement, and wound healing. Recipient pathology is important. For instance, uh, stigmatism would be much more in cases where corneal transplants have been done for keratoconus, and so is the topography of the recipient. No, not all eye banks have uh, the uh, topographer to screen out the uh, donor corneas in terms of uh, uh, keratoconus or ectasias. And uh, it is important when you do a corneal transplant to place the fixation rings if they are, these are being used in a, in a symmetrical manner so that it is completely parallel to the limbus and the, there is uh, equal suture tension to prevent any undue astigmatism. When you do trifonation, it should be completely round and circular and not uh, oval such as this. Then uh, there are, uh, there are uh, suction trifines, handheld suction trifines, as well as hesburgh baron suction trifine, which have a cross ring in the center for the centration of the uh, uh, recipient, as well as for the donor, you have four met metallic plates and four holes to match the same. And it is important that you mark the center of the uh, cornea completely uh, uh, make it completely central and then use a trifine to trifonate the recipient cornea. And one can even place uh, uh, an RK marker which is stained with the genitian wallet to, uh, to make an impression of the sutures which would be placed later on. Then when you have ex eccentric trifonation such as this, it can cause irregular astigmatism such as in this case, high irregular astigmatism because of eccentric graft of about 13 diopters. Femtosecond laser does give you a more exact trifonation, both in terms of the congruousness as well as the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the symmetry of the same. And again, uh, when you are uh, cutting the uh, cornea on the uh, recipient, one has to keep the scissors absolutely perpendicular uh, so that uh, the cut is absolutely vertical. And then uh, this is the donor punch which is being used. The Four, first four sutures are most important, and the second is most important to determine where uh, the uh, astigmatism is going to be. And if you have an intraop OCT microscope such as this, you can actually match the donor and the uh, recipient uh, apposition uh, by having a look at the intraop OCT uh, microscope. Now, intraop keratoscopy is also useful, and at the end of the surgery, one can titrate the intraop uh, keratometry. Uh, we did a study to see whether talk or no talk or anti talk uh, single continuous suture has more astigmatism, and we didn't find any difference between uh, these three techniques. Uh, selective suture removal can be done when astigmatism is more than four diopters. It has to be topography guided, and uh, after the initial suture removal, the non adjacent sutures can also be removed after an interval of four to six weeks. So, this is after suture removal, the astigmatism has decreased from five to one diopters. Then in case of continuous suture adjustment, uh, uh, one can uh, use a jeweler's uh, suture tying forceps to uh, actually uh, titrate the tension so that from the area where the suture is tight, you move it to the area where the suture is loose. And this corrects about two to five diopters of astigmatism. And this is uh, just to show the same how the cornea has become flattened. One can also do incisional keratotomies uh, at 90% corneal depth at the steepest meridian with the arc length of 45 to 90 degrees. It has to be anterior to the graft hose junction and it can be either done manually or on a femtosecond laser. Compression sutures were used earlier and also the uh, wedge resection. However, uh, these are not very predictable and uh, are not used very frequently now. Eczema laser surgery can also be done. One can do surface ablation for low amplitudes of astigmatism and one can do LASIK procedure. So uh, either simultaneous procedure can be done. And what we have advocated is the sequential procedure where in stage one, we do a femto laser cut and uh, then put the flap back. And four to six weeks later, you go again, relift the flap and uh, do the uh, laser thereof. And the advantage is that all the tension rings which are present at the graft hose junction, they get uh, released. And this is just a small video clip to show the same. So in stage one, all you do is just create a flap 
and this flap should be beyond the graft hose junction because it will relieve these tension uh, lines outside the graft hose junction. Uh, the flap is elevated and the flap is put back again in the same sitting. And four to six week, weeks later, uh, the uh, flap is again lifted and uh, some amount of astigmatism does get corrected in stage one. And uh, once uh, the residual amount of astigmatism is calculated after four to six weeks later, the stage two, uh, the laser ablation is uh, dealt with and that corrects the astigmatism. So you can have uh, uh, configurations such as this when uh, you do uh, this uh, LASIK surgery in a case of post dalk so you can see the graft hose junction as well as the edge of the flap uh, which had been created to uh, to deal with the astigmatism intraconial uh, ring segments is a great option and we heard a great talk from uh, renato in the beginning of the session and then toric intraocular lenses can also be uh, done in these cases after marking the correct axis and uh, 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 again uh, the uh, the markings have to be aligned to the uh, axis. And again, uh, this is a great option. So to conclude, one has to be very stringent with the selection of the donor corneas, take precautions intraoperatively in terms of centration, trifonation, suturing, and keratoscopy, diagnose these cases of high astigmatism postoperatively, and take appropriate measures timely. Thank you for your kind attention.